Hello, I'm Dr. Jacob Hudis, and welcome to Inductors and Inductants. Explained in eight minutes or less. Explained in eight minutes or less. In this video, I'll give you a comprehensive, concise, and clear explanation of inductors. To begin, what is an inductor? An inductor is a wire wound into a set of loops, and this is also known as a solenoid. Here's a picture of an inductor. This is a wire, and it's wound into N loops. One loop two loop, three loops, and loops. In the middle of the solenoid on the inside, the magnetic field is along the direction of the axis. So this magnetic field is inside the solenoid. You need to use a little bit of imagination here. The inductance of an inductor, defined by the symbol L in physics, is equal to the total flux divided by the current. The total flux through the inductor divided by the current is equal to a constant because flux is proportional to current, and this constant is called inductance. N times the flux through one area, that gives you the total flux through the inductor. If you divide it by I, that tells you the inductance of your inductor. The unit of inductance is the Henry. One Henry equals one Tesla meter square per ampere. Joseph Henry is a man with two first names. This slide explains self-inductance, an essential property of inductors. Inductors resist changes in current. When the current through an inductor changes, Faraday's law tells us that a back EMF is generated opposing the change in current. This tells us that the total flux through the inductor is equal to a constant inductance times the current going through the inductor. This is the flux through one loop, and if you take N times that, you get the total flux. That's equal to Li. L is this constant called inductance. We know from Faraday's law that EMF is equal to negative the time derivative of flux, and when we combine this together with the fundamental formula for inductors, we get EMF is equal to negative L di dt. This is a foundational formula. Let's discuss the EMF response to decreasing current. Imagine there's a power source and there's current going through an inductor and someone is dialing down the power source so the current is decreasing in time. If the current through an inductor decreases, a back EMF is induced, opposing the change and working to slow down the decrease in current. This is a cross-sectional picture of the inductor at time T1. The magnetic field in the inductor is large because the current through the inductor is large. Later on in time, the current through the inductor is smaller and the magnetic field is smaller. If the current is decreasing, a back EMF will form to try to slow down that decrease. The inductor doesn't want the current to change. When the current through the inductor increases, a back EMF is still induced but this time it opposes the growing current rather than reinforcing it. And here are some key characteristics of inductors. An inductor resists sudden changes in current. When current is constant through an inductor, the induced EMF is zero. Inductors store energy in their magnetic fields, which is released when the current decreases. The EMF that opposes the change in current is called a back EMF. Now let's look at a quick example discussing the voltage across an Terrific. inductor. The current through a 0.1 Henry inductor is given by this function of time. I of t equals 10t multiplied by the exponential e to the negative 5t, and the units are amps. Find the magnitude of the voltage across the inductor and the energy stored in it. The magnitude of EMF is equal to L di dt. We don't have to worry about the negative sign because it asks for the magnitude. So L is 0.1 Henry, so we have 0.1 times the time derivative of current, and this is the formula for the voltage across the inductor. The voltage across the inductor changes with time, and that's because the current changes with time. The problem also asks us to find the energy stored in the magnetic field within the inductor. The formula for the energy stored in the magnetic field of an inductor is one half Li squared. I is the current, L is the inductant. This function of time is the energy stored in the inductor. The energy in the magnetic field builds up and depletes based on the direction of the back EMF. On this slide, I present the formulas for finding the equivalent inductances in series and parallel combinations. These formulas follow the same rules as those used for calculating equivalent resistances in series and parallel combinations. If you have many inductors in series, the equivalent inductance is equal to the sum of each one of the inductance values. If you have several inductors in a parallel combination, the equivalent inductance is given by this formula. AcePhysics.org. Check it out! Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis. And here's an example. It says find the equivalent inductance of the circuit shown in the schematic. And here's the solution. First, you notice that these three inductors are in a series combination, and so you can add them all up. 20 plus 12 plus 10 is equal to 42 Henrys. I can replace these three inductors with a single equivalent inductor of 42 Henrys. Next, I notice that the 7 Henry and the 42 Henry inductors are in a parallel combination, so I can add those two together in parallel, producing an equivalent inductance which equals 6 Henry, I can replace this parallel combination with a single 6 Henry inductor, and then I can add these three inductors in series. The equivalent inductance of this circuit is equal to 18 Joseph Henrys. And here's a concept checker. Which of the following can describe the current through the coil in the diagram? 
A. Constant and to the right. B. Increasing to the right. C. Decreasing to the right. D. Increasing to the left. E. Decreasing to the left. The answers are C and D. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments section below. The point of this slide is to tell you that every wire has inductance. Oh my! Unless it's infinitely thin. But why do all wires have inductance? When current flows through a wire, it always forms part of a loop as the current must return to its source. This loop creates a magnetic field around the wire, and changes in the current induce an opposing voltage by Faraday's law. One way to understand how a wire has inductance is by viewing it as a segment of a complete circuit. The entire circuit experiences the total back EMF and has a corresponding total inductance. Each segment of the circuit, including a single wire, experiences a portion of the total back EMF and has its own share of the total inductance. Energy flows into the magnetic field when current increases. As the field collapses, stored energy returns to the circuit. The lumped element model. On this slide, I have an RL circuit. This is a power source, a resistor, and an inductor. At a given time T, the voltage across the power source is 20 volts. There's 8 volts across the resistor. The remaining 12 volts are across the inductor as the back EMF. The 12 volt back EMF arises from the entire loop of the circuit, not just across the inductor. However, most of the voltage is dropped across the inductor itself. This behavior allows us to treat the inductor as a lumped circuit element, simplifying the analysis. Similarly, we often ignore small resistive losses in the leads of a resistor when treating it as a lumped element, even though such losses exist in reality. The full 8 volts is not dropped across the resistor. Some small voltage is dropped across the wires, but we ignore that in the lumped element model. This slide introduces mutual inductance, which I did not discuss earlier because the focus of this presentation has been on self-inductance, the more common form of inductance. However, mutual inductance is closely related. It occurs when a changing current in one circuit induces a voltage in another nearby circuit. As shown here, when current flows through coil 1, it generates a magnetic field that passes through coil 2. If the current in coil 1 changes, the magnetic flux through coil 2 changes, inducing an EMF in coil 2. This is the fundamental principle of mutual inductance. Inductors and circuits. This is a prelude to an upcoming lesson. This is an RL circuit with a battery, a resistor, and an inductor. While the switch is open, current can't flow. When the switch is closed, current flows, growing gradually, and a back EMF is generated in the inductor. After a long time, the current becomes steady, and the back EMF becomes zero. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis.